everybody, welcome back. We're here in the quarterfinals of the Regen Invitational Part 2. I'm your host, Professor Bobo. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, we're going off the rails on a gravesy train. I am joined by veteran NGS Caster Graysville. Grace, thank you for hopping in, brother. Yeah, excited to be here. Uh, we are in the quarterfinals, and uh, this is going to be a good matchup. Uh, you know, we, we've kind of seen a lot on the, the other sides of the bracket, but this one right here, uh, this is this is where it's at. We, we didn't... We're not seeing the uh, OSD versus uh, Lux matchup mm. uh, up above. So, you know, this is the matchup that where all of the uh, the real competition is at. Absolutely. Uh, so for this quarterfinal round, we have team name change going up against This Is Jimmy. Two teams that do complete compete excuse me, in the HGC Open Division. Uh, TNC, we just followed you know, with a victory over Moto Miracle. And This Is Jimmy is coming off the back of a strong victory on Volskaya Foundry against Average Joes. Graves, anything cool you've been seeing today? What's happening? What's the scoop? Uh, I guess the three matchups, two of them with Run Boys, which is in the other part mm. of this quarterfinals. Uh, and they've been playing really well. So, you know, the winner of this is likely to play against Run Boys, and, uh, if, unless for whatever reason they lose against Regen Black. But, uh, I mean, uh, yeah, this one is looking exciting. Team name change. I don't think they've really changed anything about their, their matchups. They haven't changed rosters. They haven't changed any of the, uh, the uh, roles that anyone's playing. So uh, I expect them to play really well here. It's, this is, uh, again, it's, it's neat because as we get further and further into the bracket, again, we start seeing teams that have competed at the Open Division. So uh, for those of us that may be familiar with NGS but are not familiar with this, is Jimmy, just a quick eye on them. Uh, so far in HGCO, they have victories over Moto and Luxorian Sun, two teams that you guys may be familiar with. So this is going to be a hot one. For round number three, we are headed to Tomb of the Spider Queen. This is the last of our rounds uh, of, that are best of ones. Teams are ready. I'm getting flamed in chat. Let's go ahead, press some buttons, <laughs> get into draft. Shout out to chat. Always good to see everybody back. Let's go. Tomb of the Spider Queen. Okay. Graves, any expectations here in draft? Any trends you've been seeing thus far? Uh, well, I would expect probably a Genji ban at some point. I feel like Genji's still very strong. Yeah, I, um, I haven't, he's, I, he hasn't made it past the first ban phase in any of my games. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I, he's just strong, right? At any skill level, but mostly the higher skill levels, he'll be able to get in the back line, secure a kill, and get on out. And, and any time that's in the meta, it's going to be something you want to get rid of. So I would expect that to be banned. Um, also, you know, this is Jimmy. Speaking of him, Jim Rayner has not been making it through the recent uh, ban phase either. And there's the popular ban, so it's been carrying over from unranked and everybody's hero leagues. Mm -hmm. Nobody wants to deal with Chromie. Uh, Chromie's been up there for bans. I've actually seen some Asmo bans. We see the Urel getting removed. So the one uh, actually kind of neat thing about a lot of the drafts that we've seen thus far on my end is that most of the tanks and support actually, they do wind up making it through. Yep. Oh, Urel gone. Yeah, I saw Urel going through in my last matchup. Doesn't make it here, and interestingly, Asmodan banned on the side of Team Name Change. What do you, what do you know about that? Uh, the one match where he did make it through, he was selected. It wasn't super impactful, but the recent balance patch has brought a number of buffs to Asmodan that just make him a, a, a better hero. The uh, win rate certainly went up. Tiny Rick in chat is a little mad. Uh, he's coming off of an Asmodan <laughs> game. Uh, it's just a good hero right now, and it's very difficult to deal with. And on top of that, if there was one map pre-rework that you were allowed to pick Asmodan without getting reported pre-game, it probably was Tomb. I mean, it's just the best map for stacking, and he's got a lot yep. of potential. We start off with a little bit of pep. So, yeah, Jimmy makes it through, which means Blaze picked up on the outside. Blaze pairs well with Jimmy. You know, he's got the slow, which helps proc that uh, level one town from Jimmy. So uh, I kind of uh, I kind of like that pickup uh, on the side of the red. But uh, who do they pair that up with? Are they going to go for a tank or a support here? Thank you, one Mega Man fan, for the bit donation. We do see Johanna come off the board. So a very, very strong front line will be a difficult line for TNC to penetrate. Um, I, I mean, the, even with the nerfs to Ace in the Hole and Unstable Compound, like it, I don't think it really matters that much. Uh, the only way to really beat Rainer is to kill him right now. It certainly feels like, like yeah. uh, you know, any of the tanks and the supports are going to be able to contribute to Ace in the Hole at level 1. Um, again, like I said, it's just a question of whether or not he survives. Well, Alex Strauss is there. That means they would have a Life Binder and ETC as well. Now, going back to Johanna, though, I mean... You're going to have blinds for Jenny, but it's like, yeah, you stopped his damage for like two and a half seconds and now he's still killing you. So I agree. I think they do need to find some kind of way to get to Jim Rayner. 
unless, and I mean, on the flip side, uh, you know, a couple things to be thinking about here are this, or excuse me, is this is Jimmy planning to maybe outrange TNC? We do have Hammer still available. We have Hanzo still out there, so some of the more siege uh, range inclined heroes are on the board. Mm -hmm. I see the Leoric ban. Uh, yeah, Leoric's interesting. I mean, I maybe they just don't want to deal with him in the bottom lane, or maybe they don't want to deal with him tomb later on. Do we smell a hammer? I, it could be a protect the hammer. Um, I mean, they really don't have any way to to get to hammer quite yet. Uh, they did nerf uh, the BFG, so it doesn't do structure damage anymore. So it's less impactful. But they're gonna pick up Malfurion Jaina. That's a lot of burst damage. Some would say that they nerfed BFG. Some would say that they corrected it. Uh, if you don't know the changes, <laughs> uh, BFG does not do structure damage anymore. So the Orville at twenty can no longer be set up to just peck at your keeps while while you sit and watch this big giant bullet fly across the map. Malfurion and Jaina right. are picked up. So uh, Malfurion seeing a, a fair amount of play in this tournament, even, again, with some changes to him, the removal of Ice Block at 13, and some talents did get shifted around. But Jaina is just a fantastic pick, and, and pairing with Johanna, the wave clear is absurd for This Is Jimmy. Hanzo Dahaka. Okay, so they'll have Dahaka in the soil against Blaze. I mean, Dahaka doesn't see as much play on this map because it's not mm. that much of a global map, but he can still provide pressure in the bottom, and Hanzo providing vision, I think, is going to be really key in the rotations for TNC as well. Dahaka is just objectively strong in this meta to do his wave clear and his natural regeneration, uh, certainly locked into his mm -hmm. trait. Um, and that's why he's moved up in the meta, perhaps behind Blaze and Urel, and there is a Tracer. Okay. I mean, that's uh, that's one way to get to the back lane. The problem is, you know, Jimmy still just out-trades into Tracer. Yes. Like, uh, I don't know how I feel about that. I, I feel like that's going to be a really key pick, and I guess we'll have to see if it actually works out for them or not. Certainly. You're looking at, you know, how many targets are there available for Tracer, and Rainer, especially with the activatable uh, heal and Fighter Flight, will make it difficult. Dahaka you would have to consider Dahaka to be, you know, quite frankly, tracer-proof. But you do have the potential for Alex. ETC does not have a huge hit point pool, so he can be a little vulnerable uh, to tracer as well. Mm -hmm. There's options. We'll see. I right, Listen, tracer play is always unique to the person playing the hero. Um, yep. So we'll see if Tiny Rick, who will be jumping on that tracer, is going to have a field day. Overwatch hero. Well, against, I'm ready for oh, this. Yeah, yeah, Overwatch assassin against Overwatch assassin should be a fun little matchup. Yeah, and uh, you, you mentioned Tracer. I, I do feel it's just on how the player does because uh, you know she's high skill cap, mm -hmm. uh, and if they can get in the back line, you really can't stop a good Tracer. Yes. And we are playing on the live balance patch, so uh, the quote unquote bunker nerfs have reduced Tracer's attack damage by one point. <laughs> so we'll see how that <laughs> plays out. Actually, I did get a chance to see uh, earlier in the day there was. Uh, some HTC play where you could just kind of see one or two of those tracer bombs were just not finishing anybody off, and you're sitting there looking at, well, maybe that, you know, maybe again, maybe the constant auto attack nerfs have to do with that. All right, yeah. On the side of TNC, we see Nem Avenger on that TNC, excuse me, on that ETC. Netball is going to be playing Hanzo Schmitty Werbin, going to be jumping out on the Alex Straza, Bitty Butt Kiss on the Dahaka, and Metball playing the Jimmy. And on the right-hand side, it's This Is Jimmy. Dementia playing Jaina, Malfurion played by Dan Clan, Tiny Rick on Tracer, Jay Shifts on Blaze, and Mitch D <laughs> on Johanna. <laughs> I couldn't say it with a straight face. Mm, we'll get flame later for it. Uh, level one talents on the board here. Everything pretty standard, but we do see changes with Hanzo. What is that, Sharpened Arrowheads? Uh, that is the, uh, rather, no, sorry. that's Redemption. Yes. Yeah, so getting the auto attacks in, um, Interesting still against the Johanna. That will mean they are able to chunk down the front line a little bit better, and maybe that's what they're going for. There was like a 20% increase on Hanzo's auto attacks to sort of perhaps yeah. make up for the reduction of the efficacy on the Sonic Arrow, which saw like a duration nerf. Um, also saw natural agility nerfs as well. Tiny Rick here. Ooh. Look at that. Yeah, taking a lot of damage it's there. Just, it almost feels like one auto attack from Hanzo was like a quarter of Tracer's life right now. That's going to be interesting to see how that interaction plays out. I'm also interested that uh, Alex tries to not go for the Globe Talents, which is pretty mm. common on this map because you can rotate so quickly. Instead of going for Live and Let Live, which maybe will help them stay alive through Sustain instead. Maybe a little bit more burst healing, particularly against Jaina as well as Tracer. That's going to be a difficult combo. 
Uh, I would definitely keep an eye out because once this is Jimmy gets to level 10, Jaina and Tracer are so good at following up on any sort of Blessed Shield combo that uh, is going to be an issue. We need to take a peek at bottom lane yep. here as Tiny Rick is working on those Siege Giants. And Blaze makes a rotation up. We'll see if BD maybe can sniff this out as Jay shifts. Working on that Blaze, a little bit of mid bot rotation. Yeah, we mentioned in the wave clear before, you know, you have Jaina on the opposite side. On uh, the side of Team Name Change, outside of Dahaka, they really don't have a whole lot as he is under heavy pressure at the bottom lane here. He's getting body blocked. He has Z. I don't think he has any Essence, so that is first blood. Going over to this is Jimmy. On the backside, the rotation from TNC was a little late. That camp is actually still up and available, so we're haggling over that guy. And Dahaka wanted to be in the victim. All right, first blood again over to this is Jimmy as they open up about a quarter of a level lead, but it may expand a little bit here as Dahaka will wind up marching back. Yeah, but for but as my point earlier, like TNC, they, they don't have the AoE wave clear outside of Dahaka. Mm -hmm. They, you know, they can right click it with Jimmy and Hanzo, but because Hanzo went for uh, that redemption, he doesn't have the stacks later on as we do have a pause yes, here. We'll flip back just to give our teams a little bit of time there. So level four was picked up uh, by this is Jimmy on the strength of that first blood on Dahaka. And, uh, you know, just, again, wave clear. I feel like it's so important on this mm -hmm. map. I'm actually thinking it does get better, though, uh, at level four on the side of TNC once they get, I'm assuming, sharpened arrowheads yeah. because they'll be able to kind of uh, just wave clear that a little bit better. Um, and uh, those rotations might get better as well. Looks like we Teams might finally right. be ready. Yeah, explosive arrows at uh, level four is just, you know, instant wave clear. It's so nice. Um, big yeah. boost for Hanzo. He, he winds up scaling still pretty late. You know, you're always working towards seeing, you know, what the Pierce is going to do. Oh, we need to unpause okay. it. Uh, I can count it. Right down. on. Go ahead. We'll go ahead, and I'm going to get the overlays going. Grazeville, thank you for jumping in, helping us out here. Let's flip it back to the gameplay. There we go. Back at it, Nem Avenger here on this ETC has sort of been stuck making this top mid rotation on his own. Yep. TNC looking to catch up and experience again a quarter of a level lead. Most to that, again, based off that one early kill on Dahaka. Dan Clan avoids the power slide with the Iron Skin. Excuse me, Mitchie D. This, this is Jimmy finally picking up that siege <laughs> camp at the bottom. There was only that one left, and they said, you know, we're going to go back and get that. Calculated. Just want to take a little bit Calculated. of time. Calculated. Uh, gem <laughs> advantage on the side of this is Jimmy, as the amount that they have banked is the difference really right now. They're approaching 50 to be picked up for themselves. We'll flash our level 4 talents again as they are picked up. Again, explosive arrows will certainly go ahead and help TNC out on the wave clear. Mm -hmm. uh, I like the uh, pickup of Frost Armor, by the way. Unfortunately, oh, they missed the, uh, the ult there onto Hanzo. But yeah, on Jaina, picking up Frost Armor is going to be able to help her a lot staying alive. 50 physical armor is going to be really good against the uh, Rainer and the Hanzo. You know, something could have been said for going for a Q build and trying to poke them out and continue to sustain, but I like that uh, that adjustment. Smitty under pressure here. Actually, winds up beating the Condemned. The root follow-up is there as well. Alex Reza actually has a pop dragon just to get enough health to me. It wind up being okay. In the meantime, though, this is Jimmy picks up our first objective. So some cooldowns traded. We do see a pulse bomb go out. We also see Dragon Queen now as well. The siege damage is not great on the side of this is Jimmy. Again, a lot of this is going to be based off of kill pressure. Beady Butt Kiss looking to find that tracer in there. So we could see a little bit of priority on the bot lane. But a jet propulsion comes in. J Shifts finds himself with a Haka. The essence has to be popped. Oh, they get the tongue too. All right, trying to rip it away. That was a nice little turnaround there. But yeah, they, they should be able to clean this out. Oh, Spinny Warby needs to be careful. That was a risky rotation through there. Still gets hit by the root, unfortunately. And yeah, cleaning out top is going to be the priority because that's where the boss lane is. Power slide missing on Dan Clan. He does get face melted in, however. Right clicks on him. He should, uh, yeah, he should get away fine. Great juke there by Dan Clan. Our support's flexing a little bit here, avoiding some of the more impactful CC changes. See if that can continue after the rest of this game. Level 7 is picked up for this is Jimmy. But TNC not terribly far behind. BD could be in trouble here. He's got to dodge this route. There's the burrow. A little bit of essence, Ooh. not much. And actually does wind up getting Ooh, on the nice Tom. Time. Nature's cure to prevent J shifts from getting locked down. On the backside. Oh, Tiny Rick is there though. That is not quite enough. Wow. <laughs> Nerfs to Tracer. So this. Yeah, this bottom sword under pressure. They already clean up the ones in top and mid. They actually need to be careful they don't stick around too long because the Haka can just burrow right back in here. And it looks like they should get away just fine. Oh, he's coming in. He wants it. 
A little bit of a zoning blizzard there. Mitchy D steps on in with the condemn. There is the root follow up from Dan Clan as well. But in the end, no damage done as both of these teams, again, trading cooldowns, playing safe, only one kill. Uh, between the two of them. The TNC does a good job of hanging on to experience. They lose the bottom well and much of the bottom foot, but that is about it. Bit of a play here. Yeah. Root comes out. BD is trapped on that to Haka. I'm not sure he can get out of there. Blaze is following it up very nicely with the combo there. Tiny Rick winds up flashing out, and that is yet another kill as they have picked on this to Haka early, and in addition, they do lose the gems from the dinosaur. Yeah, that's a really impactful pick. I mean, that's a fight you want to take if you're this is Jimmy, because uh, you don't have a turn in your opponents do. If you can force your opponent to uh, back off the objective, that's obviously in your favor. Smitty Werbin trying to get here in the bottom of J-Shifts has the uh, interrupt. And Tiny Rick actually on that camp at the bottom, and uh, funny enough, Tracer really wants that siege camp. I mean, it might take Tracer, you know, a half an hour, but you know she's not going to get hit by any of these <laughs> auto attacks from the giant. <laughs> At the same time, Nim Avenger and Metball will step out and go ahead and grab the Bruiser camp on the side of TNC. It's a level lead here for This Is Jimmy. They're going to want to goal 10 as long as possible. They themselves do not have a turn in, but 74 gems are being held on the side of TNC, most of them on the CTC. Nim will get interrupted, but he doesn't want to be holding on for those too much longer. Yeah, Blaze is not here. Tracer's still at the bottom against the Haka, so we do uh, have the interrupts for now. But the, that Siege Camp is getting some good pressure. Uh, in fact, BD Bus gets very low already. Has to use the Essence early on. So they're going to try to keep the Haka down here as long as possible because they want to try to get turned in elsewhere. But it doesn't look like they're actually able to do so. And this is Jimmy inching closer and closer towards a turn in of their own and level 10. Yes, the decision there for TNC was pretty clear. If they, Do they want to trade bottom fort? For the potential of a turn in behind it to Haka Burrow, and they play things safe there. Pulse Bomb comes out, actually does hit Met Ball, but Jimmy is all right. This, so yeah, like this, this is the same scenario. Like they, they have, they're one away on the side of this is Jimmy. Obviously, there are enough already on the side of TNC, but they don't have level ten quite yet, and they're trying to get turned in. Nice interrupt again from Dementia. Them Avengers sitting on thirty-seven gems. I mean, that's the one they need to interrupt. Heroics come online. Blessed Shield. We see Bunker. We assume we see Quantum Spike. We do see Ring of Frost. And Dan Clan on that Malfurion will go for the Twilight Dream. Again, keep an eye out on Mitchy D's on that Johanna. And anytime this is Jimmy wants to rip one of those Blessed Shield combos, there's just fantastic amount of follow up. Nem Avenger slides out but does wind up getting caught by oh. the root. That's a lot of gems gone. Ring of Frost comes out as well. Yeah. Sweetie Bourbon does wind up getting caught. Let's see if Alex has the opportunity to go out. He's going to go ahead and pop the dragon just for defensive purposes. Netball on the side. Netball flanking on the other. That's a lot of gems lost. TNC does still have a turn in. They do pick up level 10. BD actually winds up serving a tongue there on Tracer, but not much doing. Isolation comes out as well. TNC struggling a little bit here. Um, as strong plays in the combination there of Michi D's on that Johanna with Dan Clan on the Malfurion is just... It's just, it's a lot of lockdown for Alex to have to deal with in a very quick time frame. Right, and Nem Avenger losing those gems off, he's good, they were to zone them off. Netball tried to get the gems before getting away. Hold on, top lane, one man wash pit does okay. land, that is going to secure the kill on Johanna, and that might, might be, a, excuse me, it might be enough to secure um, a little bit an easier defense on the side of TNC. Yeah, it's breathing room for them. You know, uh, obviously, it's one man mosh, big deal. But at the same time, with the Web Weaver phase coming in, uh, that is a good amount of pressure removed. Smitty will eat the pulse bomb there. As Nem Avenger did power slide on the Tracer and put some pressure on that tiny Rick. But TNC now has to clean up. They're going to lose bottom fort easily. In fact, that Web Weaver should be able to actually push a little bit further into the keep wall. Dahaka up in the top lane here. Actually, rooting Malfurion eats the charge there in from the Jet Propulsion on J-Ship. There's Nem Avenger, does find himself a Jaina, Dimension's under trouble. The Ring of Frost comes out, actually, with two members. Tiny Rick on the backside, trying to put some more pressure in. Metfall is in big trouble here, but the Life Binder actually does wind up following up. Rainer is okay. Nem and BD are in trouble. The front line is under immense amount of pressure here, and everybody gets away. Oh, wow. I can't believe they got away wow. from that. Um, I thought that was a really big turnaround there on the side of... Uh, this is Jimmy, uh, but nice heals from Alex Strauss and Smitty Werbin getting those good heals in. Uh, Web Weavers are still at the bottom, but 
the bigger thing for me is TNC has a turn in off of this as a Betty Plus. I mean, he has to get that XP. That's a lot of XP down at the bottom. Yeah. And right now, TNC is in a position where, I mean, you often see teams when they are falling behind on Tomb, you just want to make sure that you don't lose a keep. You're trying to bank all of your gems, and you're, you're in a position where you can wait for your opponent to sort of run out. As we see right now, this is Jimmy. only has about 30 gems on their side, so it's going to take them a little while to build back up towards a turn in, even though they do have the level 13 talent tier advantage. Yep, so they have that level 13. We can see camp already started on the side of TNC. The question is, what do you do now if you are, this is Jimmy, do you do, get, do a camp of your own? I mean, you have to keep con continue to protect the turn in. And who are your, who's the best people on your team to do so? Uh, Blaze, probably, and a Tracer. You got a little bit of an escape. But Blaze is also your main wave clear on your team. They don't really have the setup to rip a boss. So that is yep. not going to really come online until, you know, 16 or, or so. Both teams right now are trading bruiser camps. This is Jimmy, you know, knows they still have the talent tier advantage. They really only need a little bit of soft goaltending as we see Jay Shift's uh, posture over the top turn in. Yeah, so they really weren't able to take advantage of that 13 talent. Um, it's Tiny Rick getting some good harass onto Netball. So now this is it. I mean, this is the big turn around. TNC, they need to get 13 and they need to try to get a turn in, but they can't afford to lose any members between now and then. And it looks like they're gonna throw out the Blessed Shield. Then Avenger has the Pulse Bomb on him as well. He has the Power Slide away. Tiny Rick, taking a lot of damage. BD Putt Kiss gets away for now and no kills there. They only committed uh, Blessed Shield and the Pulse Bomb, but that might be enough for uh, TNC to get back in here and try it again. TNC does pick up their level 13. Uh, BD has been the target multiple times. Looks like that. Smitty's gonna go ahead and pop the dragon, but at the same time, he has found uh, a propensity to hook Tracer. Uh, hopefully, TNC can maybe next time find the follow up there. One kill for them should be enough to really force a turn in, but they're struggling to find it. The ETC at the front line really has a smaller health pool than either Johanna or Blaze, and that's part of the problem for sure. Yeah, I still don't know if it was worth it to use Dragon Queen in that scenario, though. I mean, yes, he forced them off the fort, but kind of so what? As yeah, BD Podcast already, again, that's at the target there. He has to use his uh, essence right away. Ring of Frost goes out, does land onto one. ETC is there. Will he turn around and mosh, but the uh, Life Finder keeps him alive for now. Mitchie Dees has to use the Iron Skin. There's Blessed Shield once again in the backside. However, BD Podcast will go down. Blaze, unfortunately, misses the stone. Oh, they get an interrupt on the mosh pit. Nev Avenger under heavy pressure. ETC likely to fall here. He got one heal from Spitty Werb, but no, it looks like ETC is trying to go it away. Tiny Rick secures that kill. Bunker goes down, and that is... TNC on the disengage. Tiny Rick, will he get more? He parting will. Gift. Yep, parting gift on Jimmy finishes him off. Not enough pepper, a little bit too much salt. And this is Jimmy is going to claim the first keep of this game. Uh, I thought TNC had a really great opportunity to turn the fight there. However, they just didn't have enough mm -hmm. uh, on the back lane with the Haka to stay alive. And again, Dan Clan on the Malfurion has just been safe all game. You know, they haven't been able to put a lot of pressure onto the support on the back line. Uh, with this Blaze Johanna combo, again, it's just proving very difficult for Nem on that ETC to make much of an impact. That's a beefy front line for well, the skirt stake that is ETC right now to get by, uh, get past. Right. Yep. I agree. Uh, locked and loaded coming up from Tracer at level 16, by the way. I kind of like that as well. That's going to give them a little bit extra damage. Uh, but they have level 16 on the side of this is Jimmy. They they don't really have a boss play, but they need to continue to protect the turn in. Daka burrowing in right here. They, they get that immediate tongue on a tiny Rick. Wailing arrow, or excuse me, the arrow goes out. Ring of Frost doesn't land on anyone, but it does zone them off for now. And it looks like both teams content to just walk away. It was a fantastic nature's cure by Dan Clan. You can see the play there. Uh, Daka comes in, finds the tongue, and the follow up could have been had by Netball on that Dragon's arrow. But again, Dan Clan on that Malfurion with a fantastic play. In fact, Joanna actually wound up eating the uh, Dragon's Arrow as well. And with that, this is Jimmy picks up their third straight turn in. They want another keep. Bottom is going to be pressuring out one catapult, moving his way down the lane. Graves, you think they can pick up another keep here? Uh, yeah, I, th I think this is the, the correct call. You pressure top because that's going to soften up the lane for a later boss play if potential. I think leaving Blaze in the middle is smart as well because uh, they don't necessarily need to pressure all the lanes. He'd still be in range to come up for a fight if need be as he now finally heads his way there. And then the Haka has to clean out bottom. So I really like this play on the side of this Jimmy. They've already wiped away the top wall. They move five members in. The Haka's cleaning up bottom lane. Remember that will pressure... Uh, 
uh, eventually core. So we'll see where the Burrow comes in. Smitty Wormy goes ahead, up the dragon. Wait. Trees are not quite All yet right. ready. She needs a couple more auto attacks before the Pulse Bomb is going to come through. Been looking for Hanzo, but has not found Netball. And this is Jimmy. Actually winds up backing away. Yeah, they're going to try to put some pressure in the middle. The Haka is uh, still sitting there. I believe he's oh, uh, hard to find yeah. at least two. Looks like ETC and Jimmy are there. Jeff Propulsion follow up. Rainer under trouble. Jimmy is gone. Netball is the next target. The Condemn comes through. Hanzo is gone as well. All of the gems are lost. Alex Straza is there. That's four. The Haka could be next. This is Jimmy. Find himself an ace. 15 minutes into the game. And that is going wow. to do it. On the strength of one big team fight, this is Jimmy is going to move on and claim a quarterfinal victory over TNC. GG, well played. Big combos in there. Great follow up, G Shifts, uh, with the Jet Propulsion, following up on a fantastic Ring of Frost. You gotta like what you see from this, is Jimmy. Yeah, uh, they they came out, they came out uh, a lot of gusto, eleven mm. kills to one is the final kill count here. Uh, you know, we talked a lot about the Tracer play. I believe the Tracer was very impactful in that game. 6-0 and oh for Tiny Rick. Led the game in damage. Uh, and again, another shout-out to Dan Clan on the Malfurion for just playing safe. He was great using all of his activatables. We called out a couple of great Nature's Cure plays in there. Um, mm -hmm. And then, you know, on the other side, again, just a super beefy front line. Blaze, Johanna, that's just a lot of damage mitigation. That's a lot of regeneration. Uh, and it just, again, it proved too much uh, for TNC to provide the kind of backline pressure that they were certainly looking for. And then the lockdown isn't really there. Uh, you don't have, you know, the point and click stuns. Uh, you're yep. relying on power slide and the Dahaka tongues. And even when they were able to get maybe one part of the CC chain that TNC was building, it was very difficult for them to follow it up. And I think that definitely proved to be the issue in that game. Absolutely, but uh, yeah, congratulations to this is Jimmy. I felt like they they did play it really well. Obviously, TNC is going to come back and look this look at this uh, to see what they they can change. But uh, I feel like both teams played really well. This is Jimmy just played a little better. Absolutely. Uh, so, the quarterfinal match. Let me go ahead and get that one out of here. We will be back with the semifinals. What? Oh, well, I'm trying to check what the time. We'll be back at eight Eastern. Uh, so this is Jimmy will move on to play the winner of Run Boys and Regen Black. Let's see where that one is going. We're going to go ahead and try to find ourselves a host uh, here in a couple of seconds. Let's get our webcams back up. All right. Murda's got that one. Is he? Yeah. All right. We'll go. Yeah, looks we're like. going to go pop in on Murda's in a little bit. Okay. So let's see. Is that game? I mean, that game's advanced a little far. Looks like Baja's game was over fast, too. All these games just I oh. these games just ripping themselves real quick. What's what's happening here, oh. fam? Blasting Burrows beat Baja's boys. What? what? All right. Okay. Time time showing up. Maybe that was enough. Uh, so time, uh, FYI, uh, played uh, last season with Blasting Burrows, but is now on trademark gaming. Who plays uh, up in the HCC Open Division? So they lent him back to Blasting Burrows, and he's just he's a fantastic player and a great great range assassin to have. Uh, he was really cl uh, critical, uh, and is proving to be the difference is Blasting Burrows making themselves a heck of a run right now. Yeah, busting brackets left and right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Alright, so, uh, we're gonna go ahead and try to find a host, so we will be back at 8 o'clock. I am your host, Professor Bobo. I want to give a shout-out certainly to Graysville, who is going to be joining us uh, for the semifinal matchup again. We'll go ahead and we're gonna find ourselves a game to host. Guys, uh, help us with the raid. Again, we will be back shortly. Uh, maybe not so shortly. we got a little bit of time to set up. 8 o'clock will be when the semifinals come yeah. in. And eyes on that one because that will be a best of three as we start to move into a more traditional tournament format. All right. Like I said, we'll be back soon. Cheers and enjoy, guys.